Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on interpreting the odds ratio in logistic regression using SPSS. I have several videos that cover logistic regression, including binary and multinomial logistic regression. But in this video, I'm going to be focusing in on how to interpret the odds ratio, which is expressed by the exponentiated beta value in the SPSS output. So first, let's take a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data editor. So here I have coping skills as a predictor variable, and it's continuous. And I have two outcome variables, and they're coded differently. One is coded the opposite of the other, but they have the same result in terms of the strings, the labels associated with each code. So you can see for record one, value 45 is associated with an outcome of pass on both the outcome one and outcome two variables, and all of the outcomes match. I configured the variables in this manner to demonstrate how the logistic regression output looks differently based on a coding like this, where one is pass and zero is fail and like this in outcome 2 where 0 is pass and 1 is fail. The output for both logistic regressions is the same but expressed in a different way. Meaning some of the values in the output are different but the actual meaning, the interpretation, is identical. So let's take a look at this particular data set and what kind of question we may be asking of this data that could be answered by a logistic regression. Let's assume that we have this coping skills variable and we measured this using an instrument designed to assess coping skills. And we have a particular brief treatment program, a counseling treatment program. And this program can result in a pass, somebody passing the treatment program, or a fail, somebody failing it. And let's say this is important because this program is brief and it is a program designed to prepare a participant for a comprehensive treatment program. So we want to be able to divide the participants up into these two categories. We want to try to predict their membership in the pass category or the fail category based on just having this one independent variable coping skills. Now of course we know that just one variable is not likely to perfectly predict group membership, but it can give us an idea, if it's a strong predictor, of how a participant may be categorized and that could be useful to us. So because these variables are dichotomous, I'll be performing a binary logistic regression. If we had more than two categories for our outcome variable, that would be a multinomial logistic regression. So here I'm going to go to Analyze, Regression, and Binary Logistic. And you can see right below that is the multinomial logistic. So here's the dialog for binary logistic regression. And I'm going to use the outcome one variable as a dependent variable for the first analysis. So I'm going to run the analysis with outcome 1 as the dependent and then again uh, a separate logistic regression for outcome 2. Coping skills will be moved to the covariates list box. Now because coping skills is a continuous variable we're not going to use the categorical button up here. If this were a categorical variable though we would move coping skills over to categorical covariates. Under save, I'm not going to make any changes here, uh, but it's not unusual to save probabilities and group membership uh, on the data editor. So these two options, when they're checked off, this doesn't appear in the output. It actually appears on the data editor as new variables. Both the probabilities and the group membership would appear, but I'm not going to include those here. And under Options, I'm going to 
add the classification plots, goodness of fit, and the confidence interval for exponentiated beta, exp beta, and click continue. So now I'm, I'm ready to perform the logistic regression. I'll click OK. And again, there are several tables in here, and I cover uh, these in other videos. So I'm going to move down to the area of interest for this video, which is going to be the last table, variables in the equation. And before I interpret this, I want to make sure I look down here and read this line here. Predicted probability is of membership for pass. This is important. So this affects how we interpret variables in the equation. So we can see we have coping skills and the constant. And we want to make sure we do have a statistically significant value here for our independent variable coping skills. And you can see we have an EXP beta value, an odds ratio of 1.124. So what this tells us is as coping skills increases by one, as this value increases, the probability that this participant will be a member of the pass category increases by 1.124 times. That's the odds ratio. So the odds of that participant being in the pass category increase by 12.4%. So this construct of odds ratio is different than probability. If you want to convert odds ratio to probability, the equation is probability equals the odds ratio divided by 1 plus the odds ratio. And I'll provide an example of that in a few moments. First, let's take a look at the opposite of this finding. So instead of this category down here, this level being pass, what if it were fail? What would the output look like if we were evaluating EXP beta for the fail category? Well, that's easy enough to calculate even without running another logistic regression, although I will run another one to show you using the other variable. But the value for EXP beta would be the reciprocal of this value, 1 divided by 1.124. If the predicted probability is a membership for fail. So I'll demonstrate that using another logistic regression. I'll just go to regression, binary logistic. I'll move outcome one back out and put outcome two in and click OK. And remember outcome two has the same labels, it's just coded in the reverse. So as we move toward the end of the output, we're going to see predicted probability is of membership for fail. And we look at variables in the equation. We now see as coping skills increase incrementally, the EXP beta value of 0.89 indicates that the odds of being in the fail category do decrease by 11%, 1 minus 0.89. So both this table and the first table tell us the same thing, just in a different way. The first one's providing us the odds ratio to be in the pass category, and this one's providing us the odds ratio to be in the fail category. So in an example like this, when we have a continuous variable for coping skills, interpreting the odds ratio makes sense. But if we had a categorical predictor, say that we reduced coping skills to simply yes or no. Someone has coping skills or they don't. We made that binary. Then the odds ratio would be useful. However, it would also be convenient to have the probability associated with that difference. So if a participant went from having no on coping skills to yes, there can be only that one change. It's not incremental like this continuous variable uh, where they can go from 22 to 23 to 24 and so on. If it's binary, they can just go from no to yes. That's the only change 
that we can see. So it would make sense to calculate the probability in addition to the odds ratio that, that is provided in this output. So assuming that this variable were categorical instead, and we wanted to see the probability, let's say we're working with an odds ratio that's 2.5. So this value for EXP beta is 2.5. So we want to convert that to a probability. We just bring the calculator in, and it would be 2.5, the odds ratio, divided by 1 plus the odds ratio, which would be 3.5. And that gives us a 71.4% chance that the participant would be in the category that's listed below. So depending again on how the variable is coded, it would either be the pass or the fail. And because using these fictitious data, we have the odds ratio indicating a participant is more likely to pass the higher the score is here for coping skills, we would assume if we're using a binary variable here that the yes level of this variable would be associated with a higher probability of passing. So you can see from this example it's important to know what this category is down here because that's going to determine how we interpret the odds ratio. I hope you found this video on interpreting the odds ratio in SPSS to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.